perturbation at the state of affairs. I mean, I don't like it. And it's very sad. I want things, desperately want things to get better. A little bit of improvement and I'll be at peace. Okay, but I'll laugh a lot more and I'll be a lot less serious. But, you know, it's just I got a scowl on my face and I wish I didn't, but I'm not willing to use Botox. A lot of people would have, you know, lines on their face like this if they, um, you know, didn't use something like Botox. But anyhow... Just thought I'd let you know, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault that I'm scowling. I'm on to some recent current events and other talking points I wanted to get into. But you know, the next time you're overly concerned about something, something's stressing you out in your life, just keep it in perspective and think to yourself, how concerned will I be in 100 years from now? You understand, we've got to have a semblance of peace, and only God can give us that kind of peace. You know, it's a very personal relationship. we got to pray. you got to invite them in and, you know, just correct me, my thinking and my opinions where I'm wrong and make them the same as yours. And, you know, uh, just remember the things you care about the most, like your children, for example. You say, hey, God cares about them infinitely more than me. And he's a jealous God. So you don't want to try to, t you know, usurp his place, his role in concern for your children. Okay, you do what you can do to raise them right and, and, you know, give them cautionary tales and information that, you know, can prevent them from falling into pits. But beyond that, you just have to trust God and pray for them. And, you know, that's what we all have to do. And, uh, you know, know that God has numbered the hairs on their head. And that's more than I've ever heard any parent do. So just keep everything in perspective. Don't stress out too much because it too shall come to pass. Don't worry. God doesn't want you. He wants you to turn to him and say, keep it in perspective. I mean, yeah, we all struggle and, you know, we all are sinners and that's a shame. I, I wish to God we weren't cognizant of sin and separation from the mind and heart of God. You know, scripture says, you know, let every man be called a liar. We all have a propensity to be liars. That's satanic. That's devilish. We, sh we ought not have that. And we've all got our own little reasoning, you know, rationales and our stupid little heads, our fears and insecurities and all this crap, okay? But God cannot lie, okay? If there's one thing about God, he can't lie, okay? So God's always faithful and true, and he just, he's unsurpassable in his goodness. Agape love, unconditional love for you and your children, and the power to give us an eternity, not in this crap hole that we're fighting, you know, to improve with his power, okay, make it a better, more livable place, do something while we're here on earth. For others, forget for yourself, because when you do things for others, you're doing it for yourself. But beyond that, he has the power to give us this imperishable body, and that's what we should be after, okay, because life's good, right? It's good. I love life. I, I love my five senses. I love everything he's given to me, and I'm very thankful, and I hope you are too, and just value life. It's a great gift. And help others to value life and dissuade them from getting, you know, too far into the darkness and depression and all this and taking their own lives sometimes. You never know. You might be the last person somebody talks to before they're just getting ready to go home and blow their brains out because it's cold, hard world, you know, goodbye, cruel world sort of attitude that we've all understood at some point or another in our lives. It's tough being human, and we need to empathize, and we need to thank God every day that he knows this stuff, and he's willing to comfort us in any, each and every way we need him to strengthen us and encourage us to carry on and help others to do the same. You know, this isolation bit is hard on everybody. You know, I think it's probably hardest for women to isolate because they're more sociable than men. I remember going to a men's encounter group with a friend, and it was in uh, Oakland at the Masonic Lodge, a creepy place, auditorium, I guess, whatever it is. But, you know, all the occultist stories surrounding that whole Masonic thing, who knows? I, do, I don't know enough about it to pass judgment, that's for sure. But um, I remember it got real weird at one point, and I said, I'm walking out of this, you know, but I heard enough. And, you know, he talked about how men... Um, 
you know, we are kind of antisocial. And I think that's why men get into sports. Well, it's something to talk about that distracts me from anything too sensitive or personal because I don't want to talk about that stuff. So guys are kind of a little standoffish with each other. The ladies are far more mature and evolved, I think, in that sense. That nurturing quality that is innate within the female men kind of don't have. But we isolate better, but there's a, there's a limit. You know, we don't. We're, we're social beings that need social contact, too. So I found myself opening up and being able to talk to strangers more readily. And it's been nice, you know. The grocery store, wherever you can meet people, it's great. You know, the, this is the greatest gift that we can ever give each other is each other. We're it. We're as good as it gets. That's God's opinion, and it should be ours too. You know, I talked about loving our enemies. Scripture says Jesus said to love our enemies, but I thought that's a tough one. How, how do you? Because when you love someone, you kind of appreciate them. You know, appreciation and love, and kind of goes hand in hand. We're very grateful of those that we appreciate. And um, and then it came to me the Victor Hugo quote, where adversity makes men. So really, the evil men make the righteous men stronger. You can't hurt them. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So it's a beautiful thing. There is a way we can appreciate our enemies, and that's it. Nevertheless, try to get them to stop being evil. If uh, those are your enemies, the evil ones, and those should be our only enemies as evil men that are decidedly evil and have abandoned their conscience. Remember, friends, there is no ownership. It's all usership. Okay, it's delusional when people talk about owning something. You can't own anything. We all know we're passing through. We could dead at any moment. It's all just usership. You know, I tell my children, and they know very well how much I love them. They really do. I've made that very, very clear to them. But I also tell them that all that love that I have for them, very genuine, sincere love, I would die for them. It's just a hint of the love that their true father has for them. And you need to remember that, too, and let your kids know that. You know, last week, I think it was, I was talking about that movie back from the 40s, 50s, I forget when it came out, that demonized uh, people using pot. And it was actually, I remember the name came to me, it was called Reefer Madness. You might find some clips on YouTube or somewhere. All right, friends, I'm on to some thoughts from the last few weeks. Any productive, meaningful discussion of true freedom, of actually being out from under the thumb of the slaver class, must be it, then it must be pointed out that 100% universal financial freedom is required it is imperative for men honoring women is honoring god and vice versa daily moment by moment ask god to keep filling your heart with so much love that there's no room left for any and all other crap Indeed, the power of demon money lovers whom have gladly sold their conscience for a buck is vast. All their combined demons cannot withstand God's power, even with one hand tied behind his back. Basically, the way we, quote, see things is pretty much opposite of the way God sees things. For one of many examples, we believe it is better to be rich than to be poor. Yet God knows it is the other way around. Of course, the very definition of the term rich and poor must be established. Whereas even one tiny turd renders the largest punch bowl inconsumable, so too, when even the least among men are not free, no person is free. The first step to knowing God is to fundamentally understand that his thinking is far above ours, often in opposition to our way of thinking, particularly when it comes to establishing a viable logical belief system based upon sound, eternal values. The more people whom require vast riches invariably requires more people to be vastly impoverished. One day, leaving this body of death will likely be like dumping the best load of our lives, praiseworthy indeed, but like a really good dump, it can't be rushed or forced. Well, friends, I got to leave it there. Friends, listen, try to remember each and every day, all day long, our lives should be like a prayer. How much God loves you, okay, really it's important. 
and strive to be more humble and nicer and enjoy your life more and just be a friend to humanity. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful eternity. And, um, you know, that's about all I got.